In this video, we're going to use a very famous example in the world of probabilities to illustrate something called Bayes' theorem. And for me, this problem is a little bit intimidating because if you go on the internet, you will find a lot of different videos that explain this thing we call the Monty Hall problem. And I'm going to give it a shot. So the Monty Hall problem originated with a game show. The game show was called Let's Make a Deal and the host was named Monty Hall. And where this problem comes up is in one particular part of the show. And the host, Monty Hall, would present the contestant with three doors. And he would say there is a prize behind one of the doors. And of course, the contestant has to pick a door. Now, Monty knows where the prize is, and he would after the contestant picks a door, he would then reveal one of the two doors that wasn't picked and say, oh, it's not here. And he would ask the contestant, would you like to change? Okay, so let's think about that for a second. I'll, I'll label these doors. This will be the, we'll call it the red door, the green door, and the blue door. So let's say hypothetically, I'm the contestant, and I pick the red door. Monty would then say, okay, I'm going to open the blue door and show you that there is no prize behind the blue door. Would you like to change from your selection of the red door over to the selection of the green door? Or would you like to stick with your original guess before I reveal whether or not you win the prize? And some people would think, well, there's a little bit of trickery there. He's trying to get me to change my opinion from my original choice. Um, you know, why would I change? Other people say, of course you should change. It gives you better odds. Well, and in fact, that's the right answer. You should always change. So uh, here's how I look at the problem, and I'll try and explain it in general terms first, and then we'll look at the probability formulas we use to actually calculate the answer. So. Most people would agree that when the contestant is presented with the three doors, there is a one-third probability that it's behind any of these doors. So uh, there's a one-third chance that it's here, one-third chance that it's here, one-third chance that it's here. So if I make a choice, I pick the red door. So that's my, my choice. The way I like to think about this is that now there's a two-thirds probability that the prize is between one of the other two doors. Now, keeping this in mind and knowing that Monty Hall knows where the prize is, he's always able to open one of these two doors and say, oh, here, I'm going to open the door and show you there's no prize. There's no prize behind the blue door. Do you want to change to the green door? And most people would say, no, I'm going to stick with my red door because really I had a one-third chance of whatever door I picked. But that's not entirely true after Monty reveals that it's not behind the blue door. Remember, there was still a two-thirds chance that the prize is somewhere over here. And the way I like to think about this problem is that that two-thirds probability of getting the prize has now concentrated itself into the door that he has not revealed. And in fact, the right answer to this problem is that if you're on the game show, you choose a door, Monty then reveals one of the other two doors and asks if you want to change, you should always change your guess and always pick the door that's left over of the two that were not your original choice. And if you play the game, um, you know, many, many times, you'd see the probabilities would work out such that you'll win the game two-thirds of the time by changing your, your guess and only one-third of the time if you stick with your original guess. That's more of a, well, let's, lay, let's say that's my attempt at a common sense way of approaching this problem. Let's look at it from uh, a probability point of view. So uh, most people, I think, would agree with this part. Let's say that um, I'm going to define... Uh, the variable uh, or an outcome as A. And let's say the A R is that 
is equal to the red door has prize. And similarly, I can define a g and a b as the green door has the prize and the blue door has the prize. Okay, so these are these are events. And we could generalize something about these events. And if I say that the probability of a r is going to be equal to the probability of a g and equal to the probability of a b and all of those are equal to one-third. Right, so that was really the original problem. There's a one-third chance that either of these doors has the prize. And this is just how I've, I've, I can write that in probability uh, sort of notation. So now Let's say, for instance, that I pick the red door. If I pick the red door, there's a one-third probability that I've picked the right, that I've picked the prize. The other two doors, one of those doors will be opened. And we're going to define, let's say, event B as being equal to Monty. Monty opens the blue door. So we're going to investigate just one possible outcome of this. So let's say that Monty opened the blue door. That's what we call event B. And we're going to assign uh, a probability of B happening equal to one half. So, so just let's go with this for a moment. Remember Monty knows where the prize is. So you could say that there's a 50-50 chance that he'd either open the green door or open the blue door. We'll just say that there's a 50% chance that he opens the blue door. If we then look at the probability of B happening, given that the prize is behind the red door, okay, so what that means is, What's the probability that Monty opens the blue door given that the prize is actually behind the red door? Remember, he knows where it is. So if he knows it's behind the, the red door, the probability of him opening the blue door, given that it's behind the red door, should be one half. Because he could open either one. Okay, so he can open either one. Either one would reveal nothing. Um, it would be sort of an empty offer. but. Still, it's an equal chance that he could offer open either of those doors. Similarly, I could say, what's the probability that he opens the blue door given that the prize is behind the green door? So if you choose the red door, Monty knows the prize is behind the green door. He has to open the blue door. So the probability that Monty opens the blue door is equal to, uh, given that the prize is behind the green door, Probability is certain. It's equal to one. He must open um, that blue door. And then finally, you could say the probability that he opens the blue door, given that the prize is behind the blue door, is equal to zero. So if, in fact, the prize is behind the blue door, he can't open that one after you've chosen the red door. He could only open the green door, okay? because then he would reveal the prize to you if he opened the blue door. So now that we've defined some of these conditional probabilities, and we've got some of this notation figured out, really we can, we can use Bayes' theorem. And what Bayes says is, I can combine probabilities like this. The probability that the prize is behind the red door, given that Monty opens the blue door, is going to be equal to, and this is the, the beauty of Bayes' theorem, is I can write a formula using some other probabilities that I know. So it's going to be the probability that Monty opens the blue door given that the prize is behind the red door times the probability that the prize is behind the red door divided by the probability that he opens the blue door. 
And then similarly, you can write the probability that uh, the prize is behind the green door, given that Monty opens the blue door, is equal to the probability of B given A sub G times the probability of A sub G divided by the probability of B and the probability of A uh, sub B given that Monty opens the blue door is equal to the probability of B given A sub B times the probability of A sub B divided by the probability of B. So these are really where Bayes' theorem comes in. Uh, and this top part, you could um, this is often also described as the intersection of these two probabilities. So if you wrote the, the probability of, of A sub R given B, it's the same as the probability of A sub R intersect uh, B. That's, the, that's this. So you should spend some time trying to think about exactly what that means. But now that I have these values, I can look back and say, okay, what was my probability of B given AR? Well, that was one half. And my probability of AR, that was one third. And my probability of B was one half. So the probability that the prize is behind the red door, given that Monty opens the blue door, the one halves are cancel, it's a one third chance. The probability that the prize is behind the green door, given that Monty opens the blue door, is going to be equal to probability of B given AG. That was a one times the probability of AG, which was one third, divided by probability of B, which is one half. That's equal to two thirds. And finally, the probability of B given A sub B was zero times probability of AB, which is one third, divided by the probability of B, which is one half, which is equal to zero. So it's sort of a long-winded way of coming to the same conclusion that we came to here. But as you can see, the probability that the prize is behind the green door given that Monty opens the blue door, is actually two-thirds. The probability that the prize is behind the red door, given that Monty opens the blue door, is one-third. Now, you could run through this with all the different colors, all the different scenarios, and what should fall out of it is that overall, it's always going to be the probability is two-thirds that you'll get the prize if you switch to the door that Monty didn't open, that's not the door that you chose first off. So you did all the permutations and combinations of this problem, you've always got a two-thirds chance of winning, a two-thirds probability of winning, if you change your selection. So that's my attempt to combine uh, Bayes' theorem together with the Monty Hall problem uh, I hope it makes sense to you. I would invite you to explore some of the other content uh, uh, on the internet, uh, on YouTube, other places um, that describes the Monty Hall problem. Uh, I'm particularly fond of some of the problems where they present the problem with more doors. So if you see a video or a description where, well, what if there were 10 doors or what if there were 100 doors? I think that's the best way to understand the common sense explanation of this problem. Uh, this gets a little bit complicated and it's easy to make a mistake, but um, uh, I like, I kind of like the, the common sense uh, explanation of this problem. So uh, there you go, Bayes' theorem and the Monty Hall problem.